Back for another one today, and today we're actually gonna do a range test in the Model 3. We're doing a 60 mile per hour steady state range test in the Model 3 to compare to what we got in the Model Y. And then we'll do the 70 and 80 mile per hour as well in both cars, just to do a comparison on both. Today is a nice day, it's about 65 degrees out, which is a little bit on the, the colder side, I guess. Um, battery probably likes it to be around 75 degrees is probably optimal but 65 is pretty good and i'm just going to air the air up the tires really quick here in the model 3 it's a standard range plus uh and a two, 2019 standard range plus so it actually only has uh, 240 miles rated range when new uh, but we're going to check and see what the efficiency is and uh See, see what that compares to the Model Y, which is obviously a much larger vehicle, but does not have a heat pump here in the Model 3, as well as there have been some efficiency gains of the motors and the battery chemistry and that sort of thing for the Model Y, which is at least a year newer. So let's check it out today and see how it goes. Hey, and don't forget, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this. So just like we did with the Model Y, we're actually gonna go for preconditioning the battery to get over to the supercharger. So that'll help warm up the battery pack a little bit on the way over there, as well as we got the tires all aired up. They're at 45 PSI right now. I expect them to get, uh, you know, up till maybe 47 once they get warmed up on the interstate here. So we'll give it a little run. One thing I did forget to mention a difference between the Model 3 and Model Y, in addition to the fact that the Model 3, or at least our Model 3, does not have the heat pump. Also, you cannot turn off the uh, passenger air, so it will still be cooling on that side of the vehicle, um, or warming, whichever it may be, but it's still gonna be using more, a little bit more power on that side, the passenger side, because of the fact that it does not turn off. On the Model Y, that software, it does actually turn off the passenger when there's nobody sitting in the passenger seat. It does have the back seat off because there's nobody in the back seat, but it's still putting air out to the passenger. So that is one difference. It might affect the efficiency a little bit, but I don't think it's gonna affect it too much. So. We've got everything ready to go, and we're gonna do the same route as we did last time. It's gonna be 60 miles per hour, and we're gonna go 64 miles round trip north and then south, and we'll have a good gauge of the efficiency. Our Model 3 does have over 31,000 miles, and these are original tires, so it does actually have uh, some pretty well-worn tires on it see what it does. Both of them definitely are broken in because the Model Y has over 8,000 miles. So definitely the tires are, are not new on either vehicle. As you can see, our lifetime efficiency for the Model 3 here, 226 watt hours per mile, which is pretty good. Um, close to what you need. I think you need around 220 watt hours per mile to get the uh, EPA rating of range of 240 miles on the full charge but we uh, we usually get pretty close to that and that's a lot with with both the Model Y and the Model 3 a lot of times we'll take bike rides and when you put the bike rack on the back it definitely hurts the efficiency a lot as you can see in some of my other videos where I did efficiency tests with the bike rack installed but uh, it does impact the overall efficiency because we do a lot of those uh, trips where we have a lot of extra drag on the car but still 226 wires per mile is not bad at all and it's certainly a good efficiency I mean you can get close to 220 230 miles on on that so today I'm looking for below 200 wires per mile at 60 miles per hour I'm hoping we can get under 200 wires per mile in this uh, standard range plus Model 3.
close to the on-ramp of exit 273. That's where we're going to start our test. And I'll go ahead and stop navigating to the supercharger. No need to do that. Tire pressure is up. 46, 47. So that's good. It went up. And we'll reset the trip meter here. For a second there, I was kind of worried we're not going to be able to even stay at 60 miles per hour. Definitely not a good day to try to do the 70 mile per hour test. So I'm glad I, I decided to do the 60 mile per hour test in the Model 3 today. Uh, but we are going to be able to start here just at this sign coming up. We'll reset this trip meter and be on our way. So we're looking for 32 miles, going northbound, hoping for, definitely should be beating the Model Y. We got 195 watt hours per mile in the Model Y. We're looking for, I'm hoping, uh, maybe even like 180 watt hours per mile here in the Model 3. So we'll see what we can do. turn around and head back. stopped here all right so we did 173 watt hours per mile on the northbound leg of the trip and then we did 198 watt hours per mile on the southbound leg and that averages out to 185.5 watt hours per mile which is really good <laughs> of course 60 miles per hour super slow 
And the temperature today was a much better 65 to actually it's, it was about 68 degrees. So a very good temperature actually for the test. So that does give a little advantage to the Model 3 versus the Model Y, but still I'm pretty sure the efficiency gap here uh, shows that obviously it's a much more efficient car. It is a much lighter and much smaller car. So at highway speeds, it definitely is going to be a lot more efficient, but 185.5 watt hours per mile, very good. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit more math here and be back in a second and determine how many miles we could go if the battery was new and uh, we were able to get that efficiency by going 60 miles per hour. Do keep in mind that our battery is not new. With 30,000 miles on it, it is degraded about 10% close to that so we actually on a full charge can only get about 220 miles range versus the original 240 miles range so it is less available capacity to us for the full charge than a new model 3 standard range plus but the efficiency number that i get here will be comparable to any standard range model 3 uh, plus because it has the same battery pack size in the new ones. All right, so I got the numbers now for that, and there is 54 kilowatts available, kilowatt hours available in the pack for the Model, Model 3 Standard Range Plus, which is what we have. And so when we got it, to get 240 miles range, you needed to have 225 watt hours per mile or better or less exactly uh to get uh that <clears throat> that range to get 240 miles you had to get 225 watt hours per mile in the current standard range plus model 3 the efficiency you need to get in order to get the rated range of 263 miles which is the new uh standard range plus range it is 205 watt hours per mile which is that's nice and efficient definitely one of the most well i think it's the most efficient uh, electric car on the market right now the standard range plus model 3 and you have to get 205 watt hours per mile to get the the rated 263 miles range but today on our 60 miles per hour test for the model 3 standard range plus we got let's just round it up to 180 well, no, let's just do it. Exactly. 200. We got 185.5 watt hours per mile average on our 60 miles per hour tests. And that would have gotten us 291.5 miles on a full charge. So that is fantastic efficiency. We could have gone, well, so let's just say it was the new Model 3 we would have gotten almost 30 miles over what the rated range is for that car. But for our, for when we bought it, uh, and we still don't have the efficiency improvement improvements in our Model 3, so we don't have the heat pump, we don't have the new battery chemistry, we don't have uh, any of the motor efficiencies they might have had for that. So there's definitely some efficiencies that we have lost or don't have in our Model 3 versus the new one. And we were supposed to get 240 miles uh, when new. So that would have been 51 miles more on a charge than what we are rated to get. So that is fantastic efficiency. I'm, I'm actually very impressed with that. Now, when we do some more uh, colder weather uh, testing with this, it's definitely gonna have a huge impact on that range and that efficiency because we do not have the heat pump. So the Model 3 definitely is going to take a bigger hit than the Model Y is, or at least that's what I'm expecting based on uh, what I, all I've heard from what the Model Y does with that heat pump. So definitely going to be on the lookout for that. But for now, that is the range test for our Model 3 Standard Range Plus uh, at the 60 miles per hour range test for the Model 3 versus the Model Y. Definitely a huge impact on the range for the Model 3 versus the Model Y. And I definitely think this is gonna continue uh, going to be a, a big difference in the speed and range test 
uh, between the Model 3 and Model Y. The Model 3 is definitely a smaller, lighter vehicle, which has much more benefit uh, in the aerodynamics department, at least. So I, I do expect that the Model Y is going to have a steeper decline in efficiency at those higher speeds of 70 and 80 miles per hour than the Model 3 is, I, but definitely we're not going to get uh, 290 miles range in the, the Model 3 at 70 miles per hour and 80 miles per hour. So thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll have more tests, range efficiency tests in the Model 3 and the Model Y. So stay tuned. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.